The ocean in Don't Starve Together is a commonly underappreciated part of the game, despite taking up a majority of the explorable space. So what better way to appreciate the ocean than restricting ourselves to see how long can we survive on the ocean? This was more of a personal desire to do this challenge, since I'm one of the people who avoid the ocean a lot in a standard playthrough. I've never fought any of the bosses that can spawn out there like the Malbatross or Crab King, and I've only ever had figs like once. So I'm hoping this challenge will help me appreciate the blue that makes up the blue marble we live on. Let's get down to the rules. Things are going to be different this time. This is going to be the first challenge with prep time. See, I attempted to do this challenge without prep, using the method of console commands to spawn a boat and or instantly and set sail as soon as I spawn in, like the other videos. But it's not as interesting of a challenge then. Some essential materials you need are 100% unobtainable. Flint cannot be obtained unless you're playing Wilson, meaning any form of mining is going to require you to play as Wilson, or Maxwell, or Woody. Sure, you can still smash your boat into things to mine it, but we end up doing that anyway, so shh. Also, you can never find gold before getting a pinching winch. So you can't make a science machine, think tank, fishing rod, or pinching winch, since they need refined materials. Unless you play as Wickerbottom, and even then, there's still so much you can't do. And this won't be like the Lunar Island video. So having one material not be present like grass would not be interesting, it would just be a slog. I wanted this challenge to be more open-ended like the caves one. So I decided, and asked you guys via my community tab, subscribe to see whenever I post new polls and teasers about upcoming videos, wink wink, to add some prep time to this challenge. This way there's no 100% required characters and we're more free to pick whoever we want. Plus, anybody on consoles can attempt it themselves. So, here are the rules. After spawning in, you have three days to get as many of whatever you want. This includes the boat and anything you want on it. On the dawn of day four, you are to launch your boat and set sail. After that, you are to never step foot back on land, except Pearl's Island. Her island is allowed to be visited, walked on, and even harvested from, but you cannot place anything on there. No planting crops or grass or any form of building. You are only allowed to take things from there. Placing things on there is allowed, but only if it's required for her quests. I hate the rules being this complicated, but I wanted a way for people to acquire sea-based blueprints from Pearl by doing her friendship quests, and maybe even fighting the Crab King. For standard world generation settings, and only UI mods like always, let's set sail and see how we did. Huh? Since character selection isn't as one-dimensional as our last videos, we are allowed to pick whoever we think would be best for both the prep stage and survival stage. I went with WX78, a character I have very little time with post rework. My plan with him was to get as many circuits as I could, including light and sanity regen ones to make the resource drain of staying on the boat lessened. The ability to eat spoiled food will help too in case we get desperate. Sure, the water weakness will be an issue, but I don't think it will hurt too much. Tig, and I'm sorry that they don't have any footage during the prep, next time they'll record their perspective, honest, chose Wendy. Abigail will be incredibly useful for dealing with any dangers we see out on the ocean, since we can't afford to spend many materials for fighting, plus the little space we have will make it even more difficult. And Wendy's resistance against sanity loss from darkness will help out, since there's not going to be many ways of recharging our sanity. The second we spawned in, the clock was ticking. Three days is not a long time, so we split up, with different goals in mind. My job was to find as many rocks, flint and gold as we could, whilst Tig would get as much wood, food and other such. We both dashed out of the pool and started to vacuum up anything that wasn't nailed down. Twigs and grass could be easily found out at sea, but flint would be impossible to find. I scanned the butterfly for the early sanity upgrade, since WX's base stats are laughably low. I made a pickaxe whilst grabbing any food I could find to keep myself satiated until and slightly after setting sail. Tig was chopping up a storm, grabbing as many logs and then finding as many carrots as their hands could carry. I followed the road to try and find a quarry biome but only ended up finding a savannah. Beefalo won't be useful today so I said my hellos and goodbyes before finding a sinkhole. My idea here was to crack it open, grab the few rocks and flint that were spit out, hop down into the caves and potentially find more rocks and maybe even something to scan for that illumination circuit which would be so useful. Unfortunately, as we learned from the last video, the caves are a cruel mistress and only gave me more grass and twigs. Not high up on my priority list as we're already halfway through day one. I cut my losses and decided to head up through a different staircase I came down from, popping out in a distant forest. 
The bats chased me for a bit too long before I came back to the forest to scan spiders to get a hardy circuit. The more stuff I scan now the better. I headed up a bit into the desert. It was the oasis desert so nothing here would be too useful to me, except this random miner's hat I found. I bonked a mole and scanned it to get the blueprint for the night vision circuit. This will be amazingly helpful. I just need a bug net to get the fireflies needed to craft it. On day 2 of prep I started killing spiders and smashing their dens to get some silk to make a bug net. I'd also need silk for sea fishing rods, an essential item for getting ocean debris and of course fish. If I could get more silk to make a sail then all the better. I headed up north or whatever direction this was and found a quarry biome. This quarry biome was terrible. It had like 5 gold boulders in it giving me just 6 gold. That's it. Look at this. I grabbed all the flint and gold I could since 6 was enough for an alchemy engine. Pre-crafted a think tank for when it was time to make the boat and gathered some more materials. I made a bug net to catch some fireflies and BAM! Crafted the night vision circuit. Free night vision forever. Amazing. Okay, day 3 already? That was quick. I'm happy with the amount of prep time I gave us since this feels exhilarating, like an arcade game rushing to get a high score. I chopped up a bunch more trees to get the materials to pre-craft an alchemy engine for the boat. This will cover our bases if we forgot to make anything before launching. I decided to head back to the spiders whilst Tig was still diligently getting wooden food. Day 2 we were farming spiders for silk so we had enough to make a sale. It wasn't necessary but it would be really useful. After getting a handful of silk I went back into the sinkhole to go back to the spawn to meet up with Tig as it was almost time to set sail. I grabbed more grass on the way back home before placing down my think tank, making the boats right as day 4 hit us, officially starting the challenge. Looks like Tig found Chester, at least he'll keep us company on this trip and the storage will be really useful. I made an ore and set sail for the first time, looking to grab all the driftwood we could find to make better ores. Tig passed me all the wood they had to craft another think tank since it could come in handy whilst they paddled. Well, tried to paddle. They got a funny mouse to double click sometimes which makes paddling extra hard for them. Using the think tank I started constructing all the parts a boat needed including a wheel and... what is that? I'll admit I've never seen a narwhal before and it looks like it could punch a nasty hole in the boat. Thankfully it didn't so they seem friendly. For now. Speaking of holes in the boat, yeah none of us got any stingers so we gotta avoid getting into any danger since we'll have no way to fix a potential leak. Found our first message in a bottle, one of many showing us the location to Pearls Island. It was literally on the other side of the map so let's push that to the back of our brain for now. We kept sailing out looking for something. The food we had will only last us a short while. I made a fire pit to keep us illuminated and give us a nice cooking spot. Somehow we even got an alchemy engine down. This is going to get real cramped real soon. I started to starve since I forgot that food is needed for survival. But thankfully a handful of berries here and I was back in fighting shape. We then saw something we really didn't want to see. Oh nay nay! Go the other way! There's a moon key over here! <laughs> Uh, uh, we do not want a raid. We do not want a raid. Yeah, the last thing we wanted to deal with were pirate raids. Sure, they could drop some nice food, but they'll also steal most of our stuff. We got the hell out of there pronto. Can't stay around here for too long before they come for us. We got a sail down to help make us some distance right before we found our first ocean debris. I made a sea fishing rod to reel it in, and then a shark appeared. No! Row, row, row. Get Abigail on him. Thankfully, since it was dark, Abigail was able to attack it and deal extra damage. After a long and arduous, during which I was able to get a nighttime spinner and bobber from the ocean debris battle, we got four chunks of big fish meat. We'll need all the food we can get and this will come in real handy. The fish and bobbins I found would come in handy too, right? But then we found it. The waterlogged biome. Home of the fancy figs and the funky spiders. This is where we're going to be spending most of our time, since the figs here are going to be our best source of food. As disappointingly average as they may be, they grow fast and didn't make us insane, so it was the best we could afford. Also, those big old grass skaters will give us sticks and grass. That combined with the ocean stuff floating in, we're going to be fine on both of those. I chopped down one of the trees, getting us a couple logs. Might come in handy. Grabbing the figs can sometimes agitate the nearby spiders. Thankfully, as we all know, Abigail is awesome at dealing with spiders. So we got a clear source of monster meat, silk and glands. As night blessed us, I was able to make zero use out of the nighttime spinner lure as all the fish just ran away. 
cool. We chopped some more trees and broke a spider den since it will respawn to get some silk. Found a floating boat scrap which will give us some boards. Excellent fuel and can come in handy for any damages we might sustain. Drifted ourselves over to a sea stack to see if we could get any rocks. Half it's just gonna fall in the water, isn't it? As it flies. Yeah, all of it. All of it falls oh into the water. God. <laughs> Never mind. The rest of the day was us just drifting around the angle, sticks and grass that'll fall from the canopy, and the occasional fig plus spider battle. I tried catching more fish in the afternoon with some different bait. Still no luck. I could have sworn fishing was way easier than this. Or I'm just terrible. Probably that. I put a fig on my hook to see if that'll catch those big old fish and jackpot, they did. It consumes the fig so at the time I assumed it wasn't worth it but it turns out raw and cooked fish give way more food than raw and cooked figs. Oh well. I tried to do some more fishing at night with my spinner bait but no bite. Bah. It was at this point we reached the end of our prep time food as I ate the last few carrots. Hey I'm surprised we made it this far. We then proceeded to do what would become our new pastime for the next few days, sailing around the waterlogged biome and rotating around it, finding any ocean debris or bottles we come across. We found one and... Are you joking? What just happened? It fought and it broke the line so I lost the cool float and everything. Okay. Well, well at least I don't need to complain about the spinner bait not working now, huh? Ah well, at least we got a stick and spoiled fish. Cool. Went to mine some more rocks and got a whopping one rock this time. This was too much excitement for one day so we went back to the figgy trees and topped up our hunger. More failed fishing led us into the night, where we got visited by old Wavy Jones. This guy is like the boat version of those night hands, only ten times worse since he'll try to drop your sail and unplug any holes you may have in your boat. Despite the cool change in scenery, this place really wasn't exciting. Our day consisted of picking figs, fighting the preceding spiders that they spawn, Abigail kicking their ass like always as we explored around the sunken forest finding bottles and all sorts of nautical nonsense. The bottles are going to be useful. Just like these seeds! Those are calories! They are. Found a scary dark patch of the ocean with a broken boat over it. I'm sure there's nothing terrible about that, so we parked our boat right over that and broke the fragments to get more planks. More debris with more rubbish. I'm just going to skip mentioning these now unless they have like a gun in it or something. That would be pretty cool. On day 9 we kept to our ocean chores whilst chatting about things like what characters we could beat up in a fight. We're going to start at the bottom of the list, Walter, okay, smash yeah, his glasses. Man. My list, uh, Wendy, because she's a stupid little girl. Willow, she's a stupid little girl. Yeah, but then, but then we have to think, like, do they have their powers? In that case, I could punch Walter in the teeth and he would, like, laugh at me. Like, wow, this is really cool. But, you know, he gets the same thing now. She'll probably cry, so I might feel a little bit bad. Not much else happened on this day. It was clear by now, too, that hounds won't come to attack us. And no, I'm not spawning in the deer clops, okay? Unless she learns how to navigate a sea vessel, she can't mess with us. Since food was a luxury, I irresponsibly ate some cooked kelp. My sanity, why'd I do that? Oh, cool. No. Cool. 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 How much? That's half now, it's fine. I, I got a sanity upgrade, so my max sanity is a nice round 190. I've got five figs on me. No, I don't. I have four figs on me. I, I could turn figs in... My body uh... is a machine that turns figs into diarrhea. No, my body is a machine. <laughs> See, I play Wurt a lot and she gets really nice benefits from eating kelp. Wurt would have been a great pick for this challenge actually. The veggies giving you extra stats and sanity gain from holding fish. That's why I'm glad we went with the prep phase style to this challenge. It opens up so many different character choices instead of just Wilson plus Maxwell. I'd love for you guys to try this challenge out and let me know how it goes. Can you beat our score? Most probably. More drifting around the waterlogged biome we decided to call our home. I'm getting flashbacks to the Lunar Island. Nah, this wasn't anywhere near as close as that. Smashed our boat into a nearby sea stack, which thank the lord didn't cause a leak. That would be a one-way ticket to old Wavy Jones's locker. We wanted to slowly go around the waterlogged biome to reveal the surrounding map. I mean, all we're gonna find is the ocean, but if we keep going in circles, we'll occasionally find bottles and ocean debris that spawned on our first rotation. We wanted the bottles for the eventual buried treasure, even though right now we have no way of getting them, and debris for fishing rod gubbins. Only bottles we could find were generic messages. No treasure. 
For food, we had a steady supply of figs and maybe the occasional fish we could catch with any rot slash seeds that didn't fall into my mouth. We found two bottles in rapid succession that had absolutely nothing in them. Uh, at least we could trade the bottles in eventually for the pinch and winch blueprints and shell bundles. What use would the shell bundles be? No idea. We assumed we needed to actually reach Pearl's Island before any treasure would spawn via the bottles, so we decided to head back to the waterlogged forest and stock up on some food for an eventual trip around the world to Pearl's place. I made a kelp bumper for our boat. It won't protect us from much since it's literal seagrass held on by cordage, but it's something. We got lots of monster meat from the spiders. Currently the only use it has is emergency food. Except this emergency food will give you a stomachache instead of a headache. Also notice how we have a sail that we never used. Yeah, unless we were planning on crossing great distances, the driftwood oars are just way better. So we decided to put that sail to use and made our ways to Pearl's Island. It looks like a straight shot, but if you check the map of course, it wasn't. So we had to hug the coast of the main island, tempting us with its green grass, just begging for our shoes to bless it. Found a nice big gathering of kelp. Forgot these things only spawn in coastal oceans. Was wondering why we were not finding any kelp around the waterlogged forest. Unfortunately, we didn't pack much food for this trip since we weren't expecting a giant land formation in the way. We had to eat some kelp for sustenance, but with no way to get our sanity back, we were quickly going insane. These sea-based nightmares are no joke. Crawling horrors cannot be kited as easily since our cramped nightmare of a raft was lacking in the space department. We were also privy to these guys. What is that thing in the water? Uh, what the f is that crab? I'm rowing us away from that thing. Uh, several! They attach to the boat. Yeah, I've never seen these things before. They are terrifying. They seem to latch onto the side of your boat and wildly swing at you, dealing lots of damage real fast. Since I had nothing else to do but fight, I put on my only log suit and spear I could afford and fought for my damn life. My log suit broke right after I killed the crawling horror. These terror claw things are awful, but thankfully I was able to fit in a spot where they wouldn't reach me. There wasn't much I could do other than wait until we arrived at Pearl's Island. All I needed to do was stand perfectly still. But then I slipped and got sliced in half by one, killing me after keeping them waiting for so long. Thankfully though, due to our escapades in the waterlogged forest, we had lots of glands and grass, so Tig was able to revive me with a telltale heart. Phew, remember, as part of the last video, it's game over if we both die. With my health lowered and battery drained, we hugged the coast on the way towards Pearl's place. There was something there that could turn this run around for the better. My sanity drained more and more until I fell back into insanity again, but I was able to quickly prototype a bunch of random junk to get that one-time sanity boon from it, even making a top hat to regain some sanity. Despite being above the sanity threshold, they still killed me. Nightmares will still try and get one to two hits off on you if they're still chasing you whilst you were insane. Well, that was annoying as hell. Two deaths to my name already, ugh. So much for being good at fighting nightmares. Tig revived me yet again, lowering my health even more as we finally arrived at Pearl's place. As per the rules, we were allowed to take stuff from the island but not live or place anything ourselves here, unless it's relevant to quests. So I pillaged all her saplings and kelp stalks, but the main reason I wanted to come here? If I scan Pearl, I can get the music box circuit. This gives me a passive sanity regen aura, so for both Tig and I, sanity will no longer be an issue. It's a bit late considering I've already died to sanity twice, but eh, no complaints from me. We gave our goodbyes to Pearl since there wasn't much we could do here for now and set forth into the blue once more. Oh, I forgot to mention, you may have noticed it during the whole ordeal with the nightmares, but we found another waterlogged biome not too far from Pearl's place. So this will become our new base for operations from here on out. Don't have to worry about those pirates anymore too since we're far enough away. Time to get some more food. A shark rolled up to our new tree so we got Abby to kill it for us. She got a bit eager and started to fight a grass gator. We were a little worried because again, we've never fought this thing in our life. But it looks like it was worth it, look at all that meat! Abby needs full HP and needs to fight at night in order to achieve this however, so it wasn't something we could do every day. So the tree dropped nut on our boat, all this was going to do was make our already messy boat even more messy. I wanted to make a tin fishing bin to store any fish we may catch because it was at this point when I discovered how good raw and cooked fish were. You may be thinking, where's your crock pot? You got the materials to make it. We never made a crock pot, I don't know why. Also, here's my reveal to discovering how many slots they have nowadays. Into Chester as well. What? One. 
Look how much storage a fishing bin has nowadays. Oh my god, I remember it being like six or four. When did they even. change that? <laughs> yeah, when did they change this? I thought we had a mod installed or something, but nope. They were buffed at some point. Crazy storage. It also restores the durability of fish, don't forget. Abby got a little bit excited to fight another grass gator, but she would have died, so we had to bounce. Thankfully, the grass gators don't chase you for too long. The leafy meat and fish were an amazing source of food. I always assumed the sea was a hard place to get food, and here we are rolling in the stuff. Sure, it takes a lot of work, but still, no risk. We fell back into our natural groove, just like the other waterlogged biomes. Chopping trees, grabbing figs, fighting spider. I made Tig a fishing rod so they could join in on the fun. Took them a few attempts, but they got it eventually. These Swedish fish love figs. We got another gator before day 20 rolled around. This was more of the same like the last day. Nothing really noteworthy happened. Because we were sticking to the underside of the tree, we weren't finding any bottles of debris either, so that goal was on the back burner for a while whilst we got a bit more comfortable with our current situation. By the way, this music box was such a good idea. Notice how my sanity never drops below max anymore? Awesome. The music is getting a little bit annoying though. Found a deep bass shoal near us. We'll soon learn to love these guys since they're easy as hell to catch, but not with our current fishing gear sadly. We had a bit of a rough moment with some grass skaters, but we were never in any real danger, just lost some potential food. Oh, it's winter. That totally just crept up on us. Time feels like it moves differently when you're out here. I don't see how winter will be any different from autumn since we have a fire pit attached to us at all times. Plus, figs and such will still grow all throughout winter. So just letting you know that, yeah, winter, much like on the lunar island, is a great time for these activities. We spent the day just fishing up a storm, converting figs into fish, trying to see what else we could catch with any rot we still had. I also planted those kelp stalks we got from Pearls Island in the forest, just as another source of food. More sea fishing. I see fishing, I subscribe. God, that was terrible. Caught some little fish, as the Swedish fish seemed kind of rare but they're better than nothing. Like I said on the Lula Island video, I'm sorry if it feels like we're skipping over stuff. There's honestly not much to see, just the same old harvest some resources and get food. That's the nature of these restriction based challenges. Let me know if you guys would want to see the full uncut videos of these runs, since we do have a lot of banter in this downtime. We found seaweeds! I know that these guys can drop barnacles if you harvest them when sleeping. Another source of food seems great to me. As night fell, we swooped in to scrape off some of those delicious looking barnacles until... What are you doing? Uh, 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 we need to go. Just... no. It's okay, those guys just spit at you to put your fire out, it looks like. Oh god, the spittlefish guys hate fire. Not good. We could use torchlight to harvest some barnacles, but would quickly start to freeze as our only source of heat was that campfire. Bit of a tricky time to harvest these things as long as there's spittlefish around in the winter. We ended up getting 15 barnacles, since seaweeds have 3 barnacles each. They're not the best food and it would be significantly better if we made that crockpot, but either way, it's a source of food. I'll take it. In case you didn't know, these guys will turn hostile if you try and harvest them during the day or dusk. They'll punch nasty holes in your boat and your skull too. Unless you're Wormwood, you can harvest them for free at any time. Abby got us another shark, and as night rolled in, we tried to get more rocks from the sea stacks. God, this is so good. I love it. Mm. I love it. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Fine. I'll give up. You win. Congratulations, game. You beat me. It's, you beat me. It, it's it's not it's not the. I'm guessing the best thing. thing to do is just to slam your boat into it with a bumper. Yeah. So like yeah. you go underneath the rocks and you catch them on the boat. Good stuff. As day twenty six broke, we found another bottle. We're never gonna find buried treasure. We found buried treasure. <laughs> of course, that was gonna happen. Okay, new goal: get that treasure. To get that treasure, we need a pinch and winch. To get a pinch and winch, we need to buy it from Pearl. To buy it from Pearl, we need to get our friendship level with her to at least level 1. We decided to do the dry six things on her island quest, since we had some monster meat and a fish we could spare. We could have also used dried kelp, but I forgot they could be dried. Whoops. 
We arrived a bit too late and Pearl was sleeping, so we waited outside her island whilst Abby messed up another shark. When day hit us, we ran over to her island to get the job done. It was a little bit cold since we had no thermal insulation, but hey, we good. Got the blueprint for the winch and we skedaddled. Despite a good, like, 90% of all rocks we mined would drop into the bottom of the ocean, we did have enough rocks to make our cool new pinching winch. Who cares about less room being on the boat when we can pick stuff up now, like this big useless bundle of shells. Before we headed out to find treasure, we stopped by our forest to top up our food. I can actually afford to eat kelp now that we have this funky music box. On the way there, we found another bottle with another X marks the spot. Two in a row. Nice. And this one was right next to Pearl's Island too. We arrived at our destination, time to see what goodies we can get. Ooh, what are we gonna get? Ooh, yo. Oh, <laughs> How do we open it? it? We didn't know how to open it. One quick visit to the wiki layer and it turns out you need to smash it open. Duh. They must be hammered to drop to the conscious plus three. <laughs> what did we get? We got a sail, Weighted Malbatross lower. feathers, broken shells, we got boat patches. Heavy fishing. Five yeah. boat patches? The two dusky spoons? <laughs> this was some good stuff. Before now, we had no way to patch our boat, but now we had five ways to patch our boat. Two dusky spoons for our fishing rods means during the long winter dusks, we'll be able to catch lots of fish, since these things are amazing. We headed back up to our big old tree in the sea to do the usual suspects, but now with our cool new fishing rods, we could catch up a storm. This was when we learned that deep base. This was when we learned that deep bass are a really good source of food. They actually swim towards you when you pull on the line and bite really quick, meaning you could just catch them all in rapid succession. I hope nothing bad ever happens during this. We paddled our way to the second X marks a spot that we found. It was around some seaweeds, but they only get mad if you take their crusty barnacles. Let's see what we get this time. Tons of yellow gems. Yellow gem gold. Yeah, we found. We actually got gold. We, found, you... we can find gold. I'm. Good thing you didn't say anything about finding gold. Well, this is our only way of getting gold. Now you know why I wanted prep time for this challenge. Also, a yellow gem. Yeah, I'm totally going to be braving the sea more often nowadays. This is why I did this challenge. I wanted to know if the ocean was actually worth doing and wasn't much of a risk as I thought it was. But it's lovely out here, and once you get a pinch in winch, you can even find ruins grade loot. Who doesn't love the prospect of finding a big chest full of epic loot? Plus, being able to get easy figs and barnacles, I think from now on, I'm going to try and base near ocean monuments more often. Definitely going to be sailing more often too. We spent the next few days, like always, just doing what we needed to do to survive. If it wasn't for the blue overlay on the screen, you wouldn't even know it's winter. This is easy as pie. Hopefully spring won't murder us, right? The most exciting thing that happened on day 32 was this. <laughs> Who won? Oh! Okay. See, he right. fell into he, the ocean, that's what happens. He the ocean, yeah. I was worried that was gonna, like, demolish our boat for a second. Give him the yeah, oh, yeah. oh, puffin' jump scare. Moment of silence for our gator friend. I turned some of the shells we got from the chest into some shell bumpers. Due to how I placed the things on the raft, I couldn't put them everywhere, but eh, I put them where it matters at least. As we sailed around, we wanted to look for some ice breams for Pearl's quest and potentially to keep us cool during summer. We had no way to make endothermic fire pits, so ice breams would be our only way to cool down potentially. We decided to do two birds with one stone and head towards another treasure spot we found. I'm addicted to these sunken chests. Came across a massive patch of boat fragments. These boards are always going to be useful. Then I placed down that sail we got from the first chest to reach maximum speed. This is going really fast. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's really good, but it's also like potentially our death. <laughs> Do I have to raise them both at the same time? Yes, I, yeah. Right. Just get ready to roll. I'm like, very ready to like drop anchor. Got to drop anchor now. <gasps> Shavla. 
Okay, we'll only have one sail down unless it calls for it. This was a little bit too fast and a little bit too unwieldy, especially since we don't have an anchor yet. But who cares, fast is good. As you can see, the other treasure was really far away, but with our double sail setup, we're gonna be there in no time. Tig is a master helmsman, so they caught us around all obstacles in a breeze. Halfway throughout the day, we arrived. Looks like this treasure was right next to the Lunar Island, my old friend. Good to see you, not here to visit. Confined myself to a smaller landmass this time. Maybe another day, haha, <laughs> take care. I decided to finally make some chests. I mean, I should have done this like, what, 30 days ago? But I assumed wooden boards would be a rarity. Nope. With all the wrecked ship pieces we found, we could afford a few chests. Bit of a fiddle getting them down, but we got it eventually. As the day reached its conclusion, we pulled up the chest. Let's see what we got this time. Right. More feathers, sea fishing rod, spicy chili recipe card. Um, Actually, kind of. Sh yeah. Basically, you got more steering steering wheel kit. Oh, well, we can no, double steer. Yo. Hey, they can't all be winners. If there were no losers, then there'd be no winners either. At least we got some more dusky spoons since I forgot to mention we lost our old ones a little bit ago. We spent day 25 heading back to Home Tree, coming across more barnacles on the way home. I always thought these guys were rare, but no, there's patches of them everywhere. Next playthrough, I'm making barnacle dishes aplenty. But for now, just cooking them over the fire will do. Once again, a new season snuck up on us. Spring! Let's just approach the koala from in the room right away. Spring is dangerous, as in it may kill me. I'm WX78, and that means if I get too wet, I will rapidly start to take damage and lose my circuits, including my sanity regen one. That combined with getting wet, we both run the risk of getting insane, if not outright dying if this picks up, and we have no proper protection. I had no way of getting an umbrella, eyebrella, or any form of rain wear, so all I could do was make top hats and straw hats, get under the big tree and hope the rain would stop before my moisture got too high. I really should have gotten some pigskin in the prep phase. Could have even put a pig house on the boat. That would have made it even more of a mess, I love it. I decided to use the gold we found to make a lightning rod for the mast, since a well-placed lightning strike could really mess up this boat. Thankfully the rain stopped as we drifted back to our haven, not before getting more barnacles. On day 37 we had an idea. See, we found a salt biome and remembered that cookie cutter helmets, despite being mediocre armour, do offer somewhat decent wetness protection. Every little helps for me so we used Abby to kill a few. We had to wait for them to latch onto the boat before she'd kill them since the cookie cutters will run away otherwise. Our boat was never in any real danger as we had like 12 boat patches at this point and lots of wood to fix any damage. We got enough cookie cutter shells for at least one hat so now I have a slightly better chance at avoiding full wetness. This combined with the tree could help a ton. It started to rain again. This time it was pouring down hard. And because I accidentally splashed myself when paddling, I had no way of drying off and only was accumulating more moisture as time went on. Not much else I could do, I'm afraid, but die. Three deaths to my name so far, with Tig having zero. I guess now we know who the true Ultra Gamer is, huh? There wasn't much for me to do. Just wait until the rain stops so Tig can revive me. However, my circuits fell out and ergo my sanity regen aura. Let's not forget, Tig has moisture to worry about too and could fall insane if his rain keeps up. This rain kept going for a long time. We also learned at this point that the big tree above us will protect us from lightning strikes, even spawning a bunch of grass and twigs too. Good to know, I guess? By day 39 it was still raining. I knew Spring was going to murder me. I really, really should have thought about this before picking WX. I guess I just assumed the big tree would be enough to protect me, but nope, it's not enough. Thankfully it stopped raining, for now. Tig revived me once more. I'm now running on borrowed time since it's spring. The rain is only going to get worse and worse as the season gets later and later. <laughs> Look at my amazing max HP of 32. God, a stray breeze could kill me at this rate. Does this even count as surviving at this point? Since there's no way I can think of to get wetness protection, our goal is to just hope Tig can survive the whole spring whilst I continue to die and drain our resources and sanity over time. Our plateau of stability we once had was now unbalanced yet again. Was able to get my circuit plugged back in, so now hopefully our sanity issues are resolved once again. Until it rains again, of course. Let's not forget, during all this time wasting on me dying, we still needed food. It's not like we could just stock up on it, we were constantly just on the knife's edge. 
so our best bet was to find the deep bass shoals and catch as many as we could. Their easy catching requirements and good food values will do just fine. So we spent as much time as we could filling our tin fishing bin with as much bass as possible. Day 41 and it's raining again. Okay, spring lasts until day 55 I think. We are barely dipping our toes in this season and I'm already suffering. The cookie cutter cap on the tree canopy was giving me decent rain protection, but as long as I'm gaining moisture it will never go down, only up, but slower. When dusk came we wanted to visit our deep shoal to get some more fish stocked up. Only issue is that it was chucking it down with rain. And if I spent even a second out from under this canopy, I'd fry up in an instant. Not that any of that matters, since either way my moisture got past the threshold of 20, meaning I was going to die again. Nothing I can do about this. Death 4. Hey, I'm... I've died four times this challenge, right? I think I, I think I, myself, have failed this challenge already. Yeah, this isn't surviving. No use in complaining though, since as per the rules, failure only counts if we both die, much like a standard world. But if it was just me on my own, then let's be honest, we failed to run back on day 15. Let's not forget that Tig is slowly draining sanity and food due to my funny antics. The deep bass we fished a few days ago were already dried up. God, we really should have just made a crockpot hut. I was hesitant on making one since I thought all the food you find out at sea is good on its own and will only lose total food value if cooked in a crockpot. That and I doubt we'd even have room for it. No matter, back alive once more. Another thing we were running low on was fuel too, since this heavy rain would drain our fire pit even faster. It was at this point we remembered something. Troll nets. I know people in the comments were probably slamming their keyboards telling us to make them sooner. These things are just automatic fishes that you can load up with food and they'll catch things for you whilst you're gone. You can even accept bait that rods usually can't like monster meat. So we can chuck the monster meat in the troll net near the deep bass and get a steady supply of food. This will be good since we're not exactly getting food during my death sessions. One issue though. Uh. Abigail, no! Oh dear, uh, that doesn't look good. I've never seen this thing in person myself. Turns out fishing in deep bass shoals will cause it to spawn. You know, our best source of food. Nice! It chased us under the canopy where we got attacked by a bunch of spiders. Tig taking a beating. I didn't get hurt much thankfully since my already pitiful HP I'd have just died in one hit instead. Night struck us and we were not looking good. However, we did some wikiing and found out that the Malbatross is neutral apparently. So we carefully navigated back to our troll net to get the food we so rightfully deserve. Since all I had to eat was kelp and monster meat, I ain't going insane again. And then this happened. Let's click on it then. Ah! Um. Hey, hey, why would they do that? Well... Uh... Why? Did they just randomly do it? Right to break it to you. It's daft. Huh. What a way to go. Jesus, that was embarrassing. Turns out, yeah, it may be neutral, but it will just randomly fly around in a line, and if you're in its way, you're dead. Tig died on impact, and I died to the wetness, marking the end of this run. I'll be honest with you here. Even if we didn't die to the Malwatross, we would have died anyway. My constant drain on our resources with every death due to the rain would have left Tig with zero sanity, no firewood, and less and less food. It was, in a way, doomed from the start. The second I hopped on that boat with no way of staying dry during the winter, my destiny was already set. But, if it wasn't for my character choices and maybe if we did a little better prep job, we could have survived a year out there. Proving that, yeah, you could survive out in the ocean for a very long time. But could we? Well, much like the cave run, spring was our downfall yet again. I loved doing this challenge. It achieved my goal of making me appreciate the ocean a little bit more. Now that I proved we could survive for seasons at a time with only materials we got in three days, I'll be treating this empty blue with the respect it deserves from here on out. Plus the rain. I'll be respecting that too. Definitely try this challenge out if you're inexperienced with the ocean yourself. Again, like the cave video, we may try this challenge out again at some point. Different characters and maybe have a goal to kill one of the bosses. Would be pretty cool, I say.
thank you so much for watching if you made it this far. You guys have been nothing but a blessing for these videos. Our channel has experienced insane levels of growth over the past few days and I owe it all to you guys. Thank you so so much. I love doing these videos and I will promise you that I will do more and more. I hope one day I can give back to you guys as you've given me this opportunity. I will be applying for Clay Ambassador status soon, so hopefully I'll be able to partake in giveaways and even Twitch drops if I ever stream there. Let me know if you'd want that. Till then, leave any new challenge ideas down below and I'll see you then. Love you guys, take care.